The 1992-93 season was the inaugural season of the Premier League and nobody realised the impact it would make on world football. At the time, the Italian Serie A was considered the best league in the world. Denmark had just won the Euros and Sky Sports just bought the rights to showcase the brand new Premier League and this is where everything started to change. Now the league had just been won by Leeds United. Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United were becoming strong contenders however after winning the FA Cup in 1990, the European Cup Winners Cup in 1991 and the League Cup in 1992. Still yet to have won the league since 1967 or the European Cup since 1968. Their dynasty had not been built yet but they began building a quality team. The Premier League started with 22 teams, which is different from the format we know now, still with three teams being relegated, and those teams involved looked very different. It was also the year I was born, 28th of July 1992, and this, of course, was my first year on the planet, my first season on the planet and yeah this is where i come in because today we're going to start a brand new series using the retro database created by the mad scientist his databases are always fantastic and to be quite frank we've done a video looking at this already we've simulated 30 years up to the previous point where we are now and it's based off of one of the very first manager games that you could buy on video game console. There will be a link at the top of the description should you wish to download this database yourself and have some fun with it. But to give you the premise of the series, we are taking over Nottingham Forest. And the series is going to be run pretty much how we've been doing series here on the channel, season by season. Every episode is one full season. As an overview, we're going to look at some highlights, transfers, tactical stuff and play out how it plays out. But we are here to save Nottingham Forest, of course. At this point, they were a very well-established top division mid-table club. Yes, they had some success under Brian Clough in the 70s, and ever since then, they haven't really done much. I think they won the League Cup twice there in 89 and 90, but this, a few years later on, they just look like a well-established mid-table club with some fantastic players coming through the ranks. They had the likes of 30-year-old Stuart Pearce, who obviously was a fantastic player for England, uh, a w very well-rounded, a very hard man as well, and he is absolutely amazing on this game. And remember, all of the attributes are based on the very first championship manager, which actually some of like the physical attributes and stuff they didn't have at the time so it's very well put together and you're gonna see some funny things happen they also had a 21 year old roy Keane, and that is one of the main reasons why i selected to do nottingham forest because roy Keane obviously gets picked from uh nottingham forest to manchester united in the future but at this point, it hadn't happened yet. So my goal is to keep Roy Keane because he is wanted by Manchester United at the start of this series and see if we can build Nottingham Forest and stop them from their demise. It is exactly what Brian Clough and Peter Taylor would have wanted us to do. And of course, Nigel Clough is still here. 26 years of age, Nigel Clough. This is where some of the attributes are really funny. He has one for dribbling and two for jumping reach. So he's not very good in the air and don't ever give him the ball to his feet. But I still think we have a fantastic team that we can definitely do stuff with. And this first season, I've been making some very interesting transfers. So we're going to play out eight seasons with Nottingham Forest and see at least eight seasons, maybe if the series kicks off and you guys want to see more, maybe we'll do more. And our aim is to try and conquer Europe once again and possibly stop the, uh, the, the the ongoing force of Manchester United because we know how good they're going to be. And in fact, obviously, you've probably seen it there in the season preview. They are predicted to finish top. They've just bought the likes of Cantona, for instance, and they have a very well-rounded team. Some of the best players in this league, including probably the best goalkeeper on the game, Peter Schmeichel, in his prime. So this is the first season and we're at the 1st of September 2021 and I'm taking you to this page because there's a certain couple of players that aren't going to be at the club for a while but I want to notify you that I have definitely signed them for future because these are amazing and this is why this database is absolutely incredible because 14 years of age I've picked up two Brazilians who go on to be world-class players and obviously have a very good potential on this game. First off the centre-back Lucio. Now you can also download the face pack for instance with this so it will look a little bit more realistic. There's loads of different faces on this game. Right now he doesn't look that good does he? 6'2 but he's only 14 years of age and I barely paid a penny for him like we're literally signing 
signing him for less than £100,000. Well, I'm just curious, really. He has 20 determination, he's professional personality, so if he does have, and I know he does, have a good potential because of looking at this game previously in the simulation, I'm really interested to see what he turns out like in a few years' time. We won't see him for about four seasons, so 2025, which is four seasons, obviously, you can't change the date. But I know what you're thinking. You've already seen him. It's Ronaldo. Yes, R9 is on the game. He's 15 years of age here. Oh my God, I cannot wait for him to join. So he joins us a season before, I think, 2024, and he already looks amazing, obviously. That flair of 2016 determination like his finishing dribbling attributes we've signed him for Nottingham Forest so we've got to go a few years in the future before we can pick him up and try him out but still that's exciting but we have made some signings for this season the first sign-in Oliver Kahn oh my god Oliver Kahn yes so I mentioned Peter Schmeichel is probably the best player goalkeeper wise on this game there was two or three goalkeepers that I almost signed. One of them was Shilver, if you remember the Paraguayan goalkeeper who scored free kicks and penalties. However, when I was searching through goalkeepers, not to mention we do actually have an okay one at Nottingham Forest, but it was a weak point. So I thought I'd have a look anyway to see what was available. And Oliver Bloody Can came up. I mean, he looks incredible. But look how cheap we managed to get him for. 7 million. Now, we had a budget of 20 million, but with no wage budget. So we had to play around with a few different things. From Karlsruhe, we've picked up Oliver Can, and he's just close to his peak he's 23 years of age so he probably still have a little bit of potential to go but at this point obviously in about six years time he becomes the best goalkeeper in the world alongside Peter Schmeichel so I think this is a very good pickup we were however quite short in defense as well so I picked up Roberto Ayala because he's only 19 years of age and already he has some fantastic attributes uh, there are a few worrying attributes of course because this retro database like I mentioned didn't have a lot of attributes from the past so a lot of this composure of four let's not give him the ball shall we but Roberto Ayala obviously for Argentina was amazing in like the 2000s around about then at the, the early part of the 2000s so at this point he's only 19 years of age we've picked him up again for really cheap uh, three million pound it's worth a gamble we can start playing him he's and already in three appearances he's got an average rating of 7.27 so he has been playing really well not to mention as well he can fill in at right back should we need to because we don't really have uh, a lot of players at defense i'll introduce you to the team in a sec but i think the final sign is my favorite because 40 years of age roger mia <laughs> yes i can't believe it the guy who dances in the 94, I can't even remember what World Cup it was. It might even be the 1998. It was before I was born. Roger Mir, uh, the Cameroonian striker, he's 40 years of age and he's still amazing. He still has 15 acceleration and pace. I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, and we have signed him for a three-year deal. And there was actually like three or four clubs who were trying to sign him, including Aston Villa, who in real life this season finished second. That shows you how good their team is. So obviously Leeds fall off a bit of a cliff, I think, from this. And uh, they obviously bring it back early 2000s. Then they obviously get relegated up until this point now. But, I mean, he's been playing in Cameroon. He's been playing around the world. He's never played in the Premier League, though. I mean, what is so bizarre, like his career was so weird. Obviously, he had, he had his peak when he was in France for San Etienne and Montpellier and even Monaco. But like he played in Cameroon for ages, just destroyed the league. Then he went to Reunion, which is like a French colony, I think. Yes, yeah, so the language they speak is France. It is French, sorry. And he played in that league for one season. Then he went back to Cameroon. Now he's in the Premier League. Uh, he scored three and three as well. We'll take a look at what we're playing in right now uh, because his strike partner is Teddy Sheringham. Yeah, so we are playing a 4 triple 2 and I'll show you the tactic in a sec. But Roger Mir and Teddy Sheringham up front. I'll quickly show you Teddy because I know you're going to be interested. He's 26 years of age here. Does look quite good. His pace acceleration is quite low, but he does have great mental attributes. Very good at heading, obviously. And he's a bit of a Harry King because his passing and vision is really good too. So I'm going to try and play him in like a deep line forward role uh, and see how we play out through that. Obviously, Roy Keane is going to be the focal point of our centre mid. He's very good. Great box-to-box -box midfielder. We've got Steve Stone on the right-hand side, 21 years of age at this point. Still has less hair than I have. So bless you, Steve Stone. Uh, Stuart Pearce at the back. We've got Chettle as well. He's very good. So we do have an okay team. Uh, Mark Crossley was the goalkeeper 
goalkeeper I mentioned, 23 years of age, Welsh goalkeeper. He's good. He's not all of a can though, is he? That's the trouble. So this is what the tactic looks like. This is what we're playing out. So four triple two, Poacher for Roger Mir, just to make sure he's not doing too much, I guess. And a deep line forward for Teddy Sheringham. And so far we have played three games in the Premier League, four games in total, uh, and we're unbeaten. One all draw against Southampton. Roy Keane and Ian Dowie scoring the goals there. Middlesbrough 5-2. We had some great games against Middlesbrough because then we beat them 6-4 in the cup. And then in the final game of that, well, this preseason, we beat Oldham 2-0. Stuart Pearce, a lovely ball in there. Steve Stone, that's a proper 90s goal, isn't it, in the Premier League? There we go. Love to see it. Roger Mir, though, brings a ball down for Teddy Sheringham. Plays the 40-year-old through. Bang! Right in the top corner. Can you believe it? He's even going off to the corner flag to do his little dance. I absolutely love it. Stuart Pierce with a 9.8 average rate in there. Uh, we absolutely dominated the game, which means in the Premier League, we're sat currently in fourth place. Now, considering the media prediction of eighth, that's not too bad. Let's simulate all the way through until February. We'll take a look at what we did in the transfer window and have a look back at the season so far before we go to the end of the season. Okay, we're back in February. Things haven't gone well. We've dropped all the way down to 13th place. Now, the main reason for that is one suspension, as you can see here, we got four players suspended at one point here, but also injuries. This is our injury history. Uh, you're going to see two major ones there. Ian Wong, lower fractured arm, five weeks. But look at the one below it. Roy Keane, major. He broke his ankle in training as well and missed three months. Now, I don't have to tell you, obviously, you've seen Roy Keane, how good he was. He is our key player. So when we lose Roy Keane, we basically have a huge hole and our team is basically a donut. We have good players around the edge and up front. But in that middle, he is our focal point. And we really bloody missed him. Uh, so we can see here that the injury actually happened in October. Correlation to this, if you take a look at September and October, we were awful, especially October. We drew, I mean, we went so long without scoring a goal. In fact, we went all the way until, not scoring a goal, winning the game. We went all the way until we just stuffed Leeds randomly 4 0. Teddy Sheringham and Steve Stone turning up there. But other than that, like before that, we didn't win other than when we seen you last in the Oldham game. So, so many bad results there. We did have a difficult run of games too. But we started picking things up in December. We started picking things up and only losing one game to Tottenham there. My dad would love that. And back in January, we lost three games. But towards the end of it, we also won three games. Uh, only two in the Premier League and drew to Coventry. So, we are the very much the mid-table time. The, the mid-table team that I mentioned. Uh, Transfer-wise then, did anything happen in the January transfer window, no, it didn't happen in the giant transfer window. Like Des Walker, I find it fascinating. Like we had, we could have had Des Walker with his 20 pace, but he left this season. I'm gutted when I seen that. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. But again, like I mentioned, Italian league was just so much better. So this is now obviously we need to we need to scrap that first half of the season. I think we don't need to worry about that. We need to focus on what's going to happen the second half of the season. And I don't think we really need to change much. Uh, staff wise, we've had to include all of the new staff because we didn't have any if i show you the staff members here this is every single player that well every single uh staff member that has come in since we left obviously brian clough left as manager there 19 the set we take his job so i think he actually retires at the end of this season or next um and we move on and we signed so many different staff members that we desperately needed including scouts we had no scouts whatsoever we now have six out of eight we have all of our coaches it's just obviously a bit of a staff rebuild but i think every team's like that and so far then uh teddy sheringham has scored 15 goals in 25 appearances with four assists and roger mia at 40 is he still 40 or is he 41 now he is still 40 he's 41 at the end of the season scored 10 in 17 so as a strike force it's not that bad uh tactically i think we're going to keep the same but i have changed a couple of roles in the no in fact I'll change a couple of instructions made it less complicated because the trouble is what would work in this and what would work in this match engine with the players that we have wouldn't work with the players that we've got now so we need to adapt we need to change it around a little bit and i think this might play out slightly better so let's go forward to the end of the season okay we're here at the end of the season 12th place was the finish now it's not bad 59 points like manchester united win which is obviously what happens in real life, Liverpool finished second, Norwich is up there in third, Villa dropped all the way down to ninth, they actually finished in second place in this 
in real life in this season, Mark Hughes scored 38 goals in 42 games. What a player Mark Hughes is in his prime. Sparky Marky, 29 years of age. Uh, Stuart Pearce was there though with the most assists after Ryan Giggs with 19. 20 year old Ryan Giggs, by the way. And what is very interesting is the transfers that happened in the Premier League. Some unbelievable signings were made, especially from Manchester United. We can see a couple there. Emmanuel Petit signing for Manchester United. Look at him, he's fantastic. Liverpool uh, signing Vidi Samways uh, from Spurs. John Fashnu moving to Villa. Uh, Slaven Bilic to Manchester City, obviously who don't have the money or anything now. Slaven Bilic is a very good player on this game. So it's a really good signing for Manchester City. Pavel Nedved, he's moved from Sparta Prague to Manchester United, 8.5 five million pound you'll have as much fun looking through this as what you would actually play in it honestly Paolo Di Canio has moved to Liverpool 24 years of age moves to Liverpool and he's not even a striker at this point amazing Paolo Di Canio so many different signings were made I could go through and maybe you can pause at certain points to have a look but yeah a lot of fun is playing this, and this is just season one. We're going to see, obviously, Thierry Henry pop up at some point. He's 14 years of age. I might even inquire to sign him myself. But I think next season, we need to add to this team. We've been given a lot of money. £55 million. Pound. That, I'm good with that. Absolutely. Teddy Sheringer has scored 22 goals. Roger Mir scored 13, and it does look like he might have been injured as well or missed a few games and he's starting his, his physicals are starting to drop off a cliff like even his technicals are dropping off a cliff so yeah i did anticipate this to be fair because he had a twisted ankle missed four weeks you just see it coming don't you twisted ankle twice he missed seven weeks in total and his attributes have just plummeted so okay it's no surprises like look at his progress war it's horrible isn't it oh bless him bless him bless him bless him but it's, I expected it to happen. Thank you very much for watching. If you can smash a like, I really do appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Because tomorrow will be season number two. So I'll see you there for season number two of this Forest Takeover, if you will. In the 1992-93 season. Bye-bye.